This is the interview entire system in biology tutorial presented by DSC Charles E.B. with reference Langman Medical and Biology by T.W. Sadler. So, here we're going to visualize the integral entire system. So, to start with, you're going to start with the formation of the various stages of uh, the skin. So, in the skin development, you need to know that the skin is developed from the ectoderm and the mesoderm. So, the ectoderm and the mesenchyme. Now, the ectoderm is what is going to produce the epidermis, and then the mesenchyme is what is going to produce the dermis. So, in the ectoderm, you need to know that generally the skin is having the chatum basale, spinosum, granulosum, and then the, the, the corneum, and then the lucidum. The corneum is not present inside the thin skin, while the corneum is present inside thick skin. Now, <clears throat> this is in this one, the ectoderm now is going to be divided to produce the periderm also. So, and that periderm is what is going to produce the superficial aspect of the, of the epidermis. Now, also have the basal layer, which are the, which are the, which is connected to the basal cells. Now, these are the mesoderma here. And then lastly, so this one is at the five feet. These are seven weeks of gestation. These are four months of gestation. These are but lastly, you need to know that the neural crest cells are going to grow at the, and then they are going to migrate to the level of the basal, um, basal uh, layer of the, basal layer of the epidermis. When they migrate to the basal layer of the epidermis, they are going to have certain spinous, they are going to have certain um, um, these melanocytes, these are melanocytes here with similar processes, and those processes continually that can cause that can help in the myelination of the tissue. <coughs> now, the clinical correlation of is pigment pigmentary disorders. So, pigmentary disorder, example of pigmentary disorder, we have pia baldism. So, pia 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 baldism, pia baldism is the patchy absence of hair. Pigment. So you have hair pigment in certain cells, or why others you don't have hair pigment. So it's a patchy absence of hair pigment, pia baldism. And that pia baldism can exist now in a Waddell Waddenberg syndrome. And the Waddenberg syndrome can consist of, you make it is made up of some characteristics, including one pia baldism, that is patchy white hair segment, usually like a forelock. Two, it consists of heterochromia iridi, iridis, that is usually it's so you have different eye color that's heterochromia iridis and then the last one is white patches on the skin and deafness <clears throat> so usually we need to know that the Wardenberg syndrome WS is associated with the um, the um, the Pax region, so this is the mutation with the Pax region is really going to produce the Wardenberg syndrome. Now, other uh, pigmentation disorder we are going to have albinism, and now in albinism is an autosomal recessive disorder which can be characterized with, which can be divided into two: ocular albinism and cutaneous albinism. Now, the last disorder we are going to have vitiligo, and in vitiligo, <coughs> what do you have? Vitiligo is a autosomal disorder um, disease where there is destruction of mineral sites resulting to patchy um, formation of patchy formation of um, patchy white hair uh, so while you have white you have white patches on the skin so now the next one we have a um, fingerprint so on the fingerprint is also a clinical correlation because the fingerprint is produced because of the papillae of the dermis at the level of the of the of the, so the palms of the hand is it clear so when you have the, those papillae those papillae are specific for a certain patient they are specific for a certain person and then the close papillae can also help in diagnosing certain disorders is it clear that's called nematoglyphic now the next one are keratinization disease so keratinization hyperkeratinization disease is going to be called ichthyosis and ichthyosis mostly occur in and is going to be gotexly gotex seen so gotex appears is going to be seen in a harlequin fetus and the harlequin fetus is an example of a harlequin fetus you have ichthyosis in a harlequin fetus with massive thickening of the keratin layer now this is now the growth of the hair follicles so at the beginning we have the epidermis the ep epidermis will form from the ectoderm you have the hair buds then later on you're going to have the hair shaft which grow you're going to have the the hair papilla papilla downward and up here you're going to have a sebaceous gland bud so yeah 
now you are going to have their hair shaft so you need to know that you are going to have the epithelial hair sheet epithelial hair sheet here you have the the hair papilla downward here and then these are the other structures this is the smooth muscles which is after um the erector erector pili pili muscle okay. so that is going to be involved in the production of the hair so now the disorders in the hair distribution is going to be called hypertrichosis where you have example you have hypertrichosis where you have excessive hair formation is caused by unusual abundance of the hair follicle so it may be all localized at the level of the spinal bifida or it may also be on the entire body like in this case so in atresia is a congenital is instead the congenital absence of hairs now the next one is the proliferation of mammary gland. You need to know that mammary gland can proliferation start from with the epidermis and then you have the mesenchyme. Those are the two main structures which are involved. Now the epidermis now we have epithelial pits. We have epithelial pits which are produce the mammary, the nipple, and then you have the lactiferous ducts still with the epithelial pits. So you need to know that mammary gland is made up of epithelial cells. So since it's made up of epithelial cells, it means that the mammary gland comes from it comes from the, the, the <coughs> come from the the the, the ectoderm is it man? so that's it so now we need to know that what we need to know that there is growth of mammary the, the mammary nipples the nipples of the mammary gland follow a certain line called the mammary line and that mammary line becomes to pass through the axilla onto the the, the major mammary gland onto the abdomen and onto the thigh so those are the that's the way the mammary line is going to pass and on that line you can have position of accession nipples that's why on the clinical correlation here we have what is called politia polytelia and polytelia is a condition where you have accessory mammary nipples which grow on um which grow on that mammary line an example is accession mammary nipples which can be seen here and accession mammary nipples which can be seen here so this is this are so these are mammary nipple which are seen at the two area like bilateral poly polytelia so it depends which mammary nipples are the major one so like in this diagram they are saying that it's bilateral it is super nab super mammary nipple means that these ones are the ones which are which are um, which are affected why these two ones here are the normal ones so these are super mammary uh, nipples now the next one is poly polymastia so in polymastia of course when those those um, extra mammary nipples or those uh, accession mammary nipples become become glandular they produce glands so they are big because they they grow they while becoming remnant they, they produce a complete breast so you are going to have polymastia now the next one is, is inverted nipples so in inverted nipples you have um, the production of the nipples inward is it clear so those are uh, that's everything involved with the integumentary system to do with clinical cohesion so it's a kind of attention don't forget to like and subscribe for our channel thanks very much